Uh, setting the bar time, Kelly, these are? Examples of what not to sure. do or situations we hope you don't find yourself in. Look, if you can manage to make it through the day without getting caught learning how to do your job when you're a doctor, then you're doing okay. Oh, no, we need you to know, have a really steady handle on whatever you're about to do. Now, to be fair, we all need refreshers, and this could have been worse than it actually was. But uh, this doctor was caught Googling how to bandage uh, an ankle before he went in and or before she went in and bandaged the ankle of Joshua, who needed how to, to have... bandage an ankle. You yeah. would think that's a pretty basic procedure well maybe she hadn't done it in a long time and she was just like i need a little bit of a refresher whatever blah 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 anyways joshua needed to have his lower leg bandaged at a hospital he caught his doctor through the window of his exam room or or maybe that the door was open a little bit watching a video tutorial on google <laughs> he, wow he recorded the doctor posted the clip on tiktok with the caption pov my doctor watching a video on how to wrap an ankle before she wraps my ankle now to be fair i mean it didn't like bother him you know he said we all need refreshers on how to do our jobs i saw this as normal but you know 1.4 million views later oh more than that <laughs> now but yes i mean it's yes. it's one of those things that like you kind of expect your doctor to know um right or, or at least if you're going to google Go around back and, and Google it. Um, I, I rem- well, and let's hope it's not surgery. Well, there is a, a, an old movie uh, starring Chevy Chase and Dan Aykroyd. There are a couple of actors who were in the Ghostbusters. Or, well, Dan Aykroyd was in the Ghostbusters. Chevy Chase has been in a ton of different movies. But it was Spies Like Us, this movie called Spies Like Us, uh-huh. where they are literal spies, and they wind up in a tent trying to take an appendix uh, as doctors, uh, taking an appendix out of a patient. And they had bs their way into this tent, and these people thought that they were famous doctors. And so they had no idea how to take uh, uh, an appendix out of a person. And Nor so, would any of us and, had we not been so, to medical school. And so they're literally looking up, and, you know, obviously this is an old... Uh, old movie, so they have Before an en- Google. Yeah, so they had an encyclopedia <laughs> underneath the exam table that they would look up how to remove an appendix. And anyways, uh, this kind of reminds me of this. So, uh, not that this doctor was unqualified, right? I'm sure the doctor right. was qualified. Everything was fine, whatever. But what job did you get that you were completely unqualified for? How long did you have it? What did you do? How did you land the job? All right? Would love to hear your stories and uh, take your calls and texts. This kind of reminds me, we just started diving into this old show called Suits. And this is exactly how this one guy kind of fell into being a lawyer. Didn't go to, like, you know, Harvard that you're supposed to. And, yeah, so if anybody's seen Suits, this reminds me of that situation. Yeah, so we'll get your stories and more coming. This doctor that was Googling how to wrap an ankle before wrapping the ankle of a patient. Not a big deal. However, the patient saw (laughs) the doctor doing it. (laughs) Yeah, put it up on, you know, TikTok or whatever, social media, and it got a lot of traction. Now, he wasn't particularly worried about it. He was just like, that's fine. It's, you know, continuing education. It's all good. Now, if she would have been Googling, like, how to perform surgery yeah. or something yeah, might have would been have been probably different. a little bit more alarming. So thought, what job did you land that you were completely unqualified for? And before you rush to the punchline of, well, Ben and Kelly, how did you get your job? <laughs> uh, uh, you don't really have any uh, requirements for this job. That's, right. that, that's how. Right. Uh, Kelly, you did say that you landed a job that you were unqualified for, never having taught cheerleading, right? Well, okay, so this is a volunteer situation. Sure. Right. At the school, my neighbor said, well, okay, I'll coach because she cheered if you do it with me. So I got roped into it kind of like that. And I'm like, okay, that's the one sport. I did all the sports. That's the one I didn't do. Yeah, I think that is the requirement of 
uh, once you have a kid or children that are in grade school, uh-huh. you then start to coach sports that they are a part of that yep. you have never been a part of before. Right. You might not be the expert, but you know what? No one else volunteered. So. Like, like I started <laughs> teaching cross country at my daughter's elementary school. I, I know how to run. That was about it. <laughs> but you didn't compete in cross country no, ever? No, not ever. <laughs> ever. Not ever. <laughs> But I was I was a coach. So. I bet you were the best coach ever. Uh-huh. I, I, thankfully, I wasn't the head coach. I was okay, just that's good. a helper coach. So, anyways, uh, Dan said part of working at a supermarket was using a forklift. Apparently, you needed a qualification to use one, but no one oh, ever yeah, told you me. Do. Oh, <laughs> used, gosh. used one for about eight months before oh. the boss asked to see my forklift license. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm assuming there was never anything that happened uh, crazy that uh, would have caused him to uh, uh require unless at eight that. months something happened he's yeah, like um like, uh, do you actually have a license are you sure you know how to do that <laughs> <laughs> so great um got another message from a listener in college i had a job as a handyman um by greatly exaggerating my construction abilities every time they would ask me to do something complicated i would just go google how to do it and then ask the guys at home depot or lowe's for advice since my boss didn't know anything about that stuff either, I was able to hide my lack of knowledge until I had actually built up a skill set. <laughs> oh, while, that's fantastic. While I don't do it professionally anymore, I'm now really good with home maintenance and repairs. It's kind of nice not having to call someone if something at my house breaks or needs replacing. That's fantastic. And you know what? Honestly, my very first job out of college, it was for our sister radio station, 102.3. Um, I was hired to do the midday show initially. And like the day before I started, they're like, hey, do you want to be promotions director too? And I'm like, fresh out of college. Sure. And not knowing at all how to do that job. And so I made sure I got the phone number of the girl I was replacing. She was moving to Indianapolis. I called her all the time. Yeah. I just called her incessantly. And that's I learned on the job for that first year how to be an amazing promotions director. And yeah, I also in, learned I never wanted to do it again. In, in radio, <laughs> it was one of those things where sometimes you're just kind of handed jobs. And yes. I, that happened to me uh, when I worked in Indiana. It was like a, hey, um, by the way, we want you to be pr- uh, production director too. Uh, production director is uh, the, makes the, commercials. The, the person that kind of makes the commercials yeah. and the things like that that you hear. And I was like, uh, okay. And I had... N- no idea what yeah. I was doing, and then yeah. and you know they'd ask me questions. They'd be like, uh, "Ben, well, what do you? Uh, what's your requirement for this?" And I'm like, "I don't know." <laughs> like, <laughs> what's I, my requirement? Yeah, yeah. Like I, I don't know. Uh, uh-huh. You know. And so, anyways, I thought that was kind of funny. That's um, fantastic. Tammy, Tammy, a message us and says, "I got a job as a bank teller when I was in high school." I didn't know what I was doing on the complicated stuff, like doing a cash advance on a credit card or resetting pins. And sometimes I'd be alone and have to do these things. I just winged it. Somehow always got it right. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's like someone comes that in. That sounds kind of complicated. Someone comes in, yeah, uh, I'm going to need to get a cash advance. You're like, um, yeah, okay, we can figure this out. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a lot of learning on the job. I was going to say, it's not my money. Someone else's money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun. That's, that's fun. fantastic. Well, the, you know what? I, honestly, I the way I got on a morning show, literally, I'd been at a, a the radio station. I was like 19, still at Purdue in college. And the girl that was doing the morning show at the radio station, much like DJX there in Lafayette, Indiana, got a job in Atlanta. And they're like, hey, Kelly, you do it. So that's literally how I started my morning radio career is like, go sit in that chair, talky talky in the microphone <laughs> yeah, yeah. at 19. And like, I never how stopped. hard could it be? Right. Right. Uh, Roxanne texted in, I got a job as a tech support rep. And it's true. 90% of the issues are fixed by turning it off and turning it back on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, did you try turning it off and turning it on again? That's literally the first question <laughs> our techs always ask oh. us anytime there's any uh-huh. sort of 100%. issue. 100%. Yeah. So anyways, that's good stuff there.